Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Welcome. Glad to uh, have everybody here. I see lots of people who are um, making comments to each other in the chat, and it's great to see everybody. Uh, uh, Facebook is telling me we're having a problem with Facebook Live, so I'm not sure if that's quite working, but most of you, I think, are watching through YouTube Live, through the Temple website, and um, it's great to see everybody here. I can see all your comments in the chat, and Shabbat Shalom. It's a beautiful, beautiful evening. And um, I want to wish everybody Shabbat Shalom. Tonight, of course, is uh, the beginning of, it's the first Shabbat of the Hebrew month of Elul. Just last night, we had a great gathering of about 30 people on the lawn of, uh, of uh, our, our friends at uh, United Parish, our good friends at United Parish Church, who graciously let us use their front lawn for a shofar blowing uh, gathering that we had last night to welcome the month of Elul. And we heard Ian Sclaver, Temple Sinai member, 
blow the shofar and uh, all uh, as, as a way, everybody was singing as a way to greet Shabbat and uh, not greet Shabbat, but greet the month of Elul. And in just a little while, we'll be able to see the little glimmer of the crescent moon that appeared last night and the night before as, um, as the new month started. So this is an important month. This is a month of personal preparation, the month of Elul, the month that leads up to the High Holy Days, an opportunity to prepare ourselves, right? It's like uh, the High Holy Days are a marathon and, and uh, a spiritual marathon, and nobody in their right mind would just show up to run a marathon without training for it. So that's what the month of Elul is, is an opportunity to train ourselves, to get ourselves ready for all of the work that we have to do, all the personal work that we have to do for the high holidays and, and experience renewal. So um, I want to wish everybody a Chodesh Tov. We're going to continue singing before we light our Shabbat candles. And um, please join me as we greet the angels of Shabbat. And as you greet each other, I encourage you, if you haven't yet, put a greeting in the chat to do that. Let's sing Shalom Aleichem to greet the angels of Shabbat and greet each other. Shalom Aleichem Malachi Asharei Malachi to greet Shabbat. And if you haven't yet uh, set up your Shabbat candles, I want to encourage you to go set up your Shabbat candles now. We can make the blessing together and you can also have uh, lights of Shabbat uh, glimmering brightly in your household. So let me encourage you to go do that as we, as we bring the lights of Shabbat into our lives. Please, please join me in the blessing. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kidshanu b'mitzvotah, V'tzivanu 
Lehadlikne, Lehadlikne, Shastaba. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom to everybody. All right, let's sing now. I invite you, even if you're sitting at home by yourself, uh, to feel that you're hopefully you're, you're feeling connected in community. So let's sing the Chunranenav Ladonai. Shalom and Shabbat. Here we go. Please, uh, please join me. Adonai Oz Leamo Yitain, Adonai Yivarechet Amo Shalom. This is, these are words from one of the psalms that the rabbis set aside for Shabbat, or for Shabbat Shalom. It's traditional during the month of Elul to sing from Psalm 27. We're going to do that in just a minute, but um, in just a just a few minutes rather. First, um, I want to 
just make sure we have the opportunity to sing this beautiful, beautiful song that also comes from a psalm, from a different psalm, uh, which is Lev Tahor Bra Brali Elohim, create a pure, a pure spirit within me. Create a pure heart within me. I'll get the words right. Create a pure heart within me, great spirit. Create a pure heart within me and renew within me a true soul. So I think this is um, this is one of our, our tasks for the month of Elul is to try to purify our hearts, to uh, figure out what we need to do in order to have the best intentions, to purify our relationships with others, to... Uh, do what we need to do in the in the wider world beyond ourselves. And um, this month is very much about creating that pure heart, bringing that pure heart back to us. So please join me. We've sung this a few times at Temple Sinai, uh, but not recently, but you'll figure it out. just a moment now as we've uh, entered the month of Elul, just to consider what kind of work uh, you want to do for yourself uh, during this month of Elul to really bring yourself closer to where you want to be as we start the high early days. I'll take just a, just a moment of your own personal thoughts. Okay, we're ready to greet Shabbat with the Lechadudi. So I want to encourage you just to consider the week that's passed. Consider the week that has just passed in your life. The things you want to embrace and take with you into Shabbat and the things you want to set aside and the things you want to leave behind from the past week. La 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 el chadudi. La 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 el 
And now I invite you to close your eyes wherever you might be. Just close your eyes. I hope you feel connected to your community as we're all closing our eyes together. And I invite you to take in a deep breath. Breathe in the blessing and the rest of Shabbat with a deep breath. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Great to see everybody. And well, I can't really see you, but it's great to have everybody here in the chat. Take a moment now, if you haven't already done so, to let us know that you're here and wish each other Shabbat Shalom. Meanwhile, we'll turn to the words of the Baruch Hu, calling each other to prayer. La, la, la. central teaching of Judaism, the oneness of all things and all time and space and all being, the, sh the words of the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai together Vidibartaha, <laughs> Lemahan tizkiru vaasitem et kol mitzvotai vitem kedoshim lelohechem ahani 
Adonai Eloechem, Asher Hotzeiti Adchem, Meheret Mitzrayim, Lehiot Lachem, Lelohim, Ani Adonai Eloechem, Adonai Eloechem. In the words of the Vishamru, to remind ourselves. Shabbat is a sign of the covenant, sign of our relationship with God. It builds our relationship with God. Let me try to fix one thing here. Let's see all the words. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, let's see if I can do this here. There we go. That's a little bit better. Please, please join me. Oh, I'm messing everything up. There we go. All right. come to the words of the Amidah, where we ask God to help open up our hearts in prayer, and also to remind us of the tradition that we're part of through our ancestors. We're part of a great tradition of people who sought truth, sought the way of chesed, of loving kindness, uh, sought out the way uh, of, of God and, and things that are eternal. So um, this is our opportunity to open our hearts in prayer, try to um, aspire to the great things of our ancestors. So I'm going to invite you to stand, if uh, if you wish, to recite the words of the Amidah. And then after that, you'll take a few moments for your own personal prayer, whatever prayer is in your heart on this particular Shabbat, this first Shabbat of the month of Elul. I invite you to uh, to say your own prayers. First, these uh, these opening opening blessings. Adonai sifatai tiftahu fi agite hilatecha. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu, Velohe avotenu ve imoteinu, Elohe Avraham, Elohe Itzchak, 
Velohe Yaakov, Elohe Sara, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Velohe Lea, Hael, Hagadol, Hagibor, Vehanora, El El Yon, Gomel Chasadim Tovim, Vekone Hako, Vizocher Chaste Avot Veimahot, Ume Vigula Livne Vnehem, Leman Shimo. Melech Ozer Umoshia Om again Baruchata Adonai Magen Avraham Vezrat Sarah. And I invite you now for your own personal prayers on this Shabbat. Pray whatever way you would like to pray best. Psalm 27, which is the psalm that is traditionally recited during the month of Elul. We desire to be close to God. What's the one thing that you're yearning for? One thing that you're yearning for in your life. I encourage you to think about that as we enter the month of Elul. All right. Shabbat Shalom. We're going to turn now to the words of the Misha Berach and um, ask God's blessing for people in our community who are dealing with illness. And we know certainly during this time, uh, the whole world is it's experiencing suffering and the suffering continues and we're praying um, that the pandemic will become under control that people do the right things to make sure that the that the um, pandemic is brought under control and most of all we're thinking rather than thinking about politics right now we're thinking about the people who are truly suffering and we ask god to bless them with rifuata nefesh rifuata goof and we're also thinking about people who are who are ill has nothing their illness has nothing to do with the pandemic and we're asking God to bless them and to heal their brokenness and to give them hope and life and blessing. On this Shabbat, we think of Robin Barinholtz, Amy Perlman, A.B. Haupt, June Ziner, Jim Ziner, Ronnie Meckler, Allison Santucci, Jody Kleiman, Gilbert Kleiman, Meredith Fine, Deborah Kaplan, Nicole Morris, Selma Grubert, 
Lou and Luce, Ben Slavitt, Alan Brackup, Tyrone Cushing, Evelyn Opat, Cantor Sue Knight Deutsch, Miriam Bat Shoshana, Michael Ben Bluma Ushmua, Don David Ben Ezer Vechaya, David Emanuela Bat Yechezkel Ephraim, Shoshana Bat Moshe Ubela Ephraim Ben Malka Rachel. I invite you if you want to name others and put their names in the chat while we sing the blessing of healing to please name them as we use the words that Moses used when in the book of Numbers he asked for God's blessing for his sister Miriam. Elna, Ana Elna Rafanala. Please God bring them all healing. God bless them all and bless all of us who care for them with rifuat nefesh, rifuat aguf, healing of body and healing of spirit, rifuat shlema, complete healing and hope and blessing. Amen. All right, Shabbat Shalom. I want to share with you a few thoughts about this week's Torah portion. This week's Torah portion is called Shoftim uh, from the book of Deuteronomy, where we're deep into the book of De Deuteronomy. I'm looking at uh, chapter 17 and chapter 18 of Deuteronomy. And th there are two really important and really interesting sections of this week's Torah portion I want to focus on. First, uh, in chapter 17 of Deuteronomy, oh my goodness, it's so incredibly relevant. The, the Torah says that uh, when the Jewish people arrive in the land of Israel, if they want, they can choose a king to rule over them. So, uh, sounds like this is something we can connect with. But the Torah also says, be very careful when you're selecting a king because the Torah gives a whole bunch of warnings about power. The Torah says, don't let the king send the people back to the land of Egypt. That would be bad. Don't let the king keep or, uh, or amass too many horses, which is about stockpiling for the military. Don't let the king, the Torah says, amass too much gold or silver. Don't let the king have too many wives. Don't let the king do a whole bunch of things. And also make sure that the king has a copy of the Torah right next to him. Of course, the king at the, those times was only men. Um, right next to him, have a copy of the Torah. And we should continually read the laws of the Torah to the king so that the king will be reminded that no one is above the law. So very clear, very clear message from the Torah. Power corrupts. The Torah is very aware about human nature and it's concerned. And the Torah acknowledges the common desire of people in power to use their power sometimes and frequently maybe in inappropriate ways, ways that pervert justice and create income inequalities and concentrations of wealth that are wrong, that are build up the military unnecessarily and also could eventually even lead the people back into slavery. So that's 
the first section that I want to focus on in this week's Torah portion. The second section, a chapter later, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 13 says this, Tamim tiyet im Adonai Elohecha. It says, you shall be tamim with Adonai your God. What does the word tamim mean? It means maybe wholehearted or pure or um, or open-minded, open-hearted. Rabbi Adin Steinzoltz says this, and I think it's really interesting, but Rabbi Adin Steinzoltz, the great uh, a teacher of Torah who translated the Torah into Hebrew and then into English, and many of us are using his translations, those who are studying in the Daf Yomi, uh, the daily page of Talmud, are uh, reading the works of the great Adin Steinzoltz, who passed away just in the last couple of weeks. He says, uh, the quality of tamim, when the Torah says, you shall be tamim with Adonai your God, he says the quality of tamim doesn't mean really simplicity or wholeheartedness, but more like um, being trusting, having personal openness, being fully present to whatever it is that we're experiencing. That we're experiencing. He, he teaches that the quality of tamimut, of being tamim, is the openness to accept new things as they are without feeling the need to measure or dismantle them, take them apart, see how they work, or be cynical about it, right? And he uses this example. I love, I love this example that he uses. He says, the, the best example of, um, of tamim is this. He says, when a child first hears the shofar, they're full of wonder and awe, right? To remember like the first time that you ever heard the shofar being blown, or maybe if you can't remember that, uh, like picture some children in our synagogue who are listening to the shofar being blown. This is the first time to hear it, they may be like, whoa, that's cool, you know, or they might feel a sense of alarm or, uh, or concern at hearing this awesome sight, sound uh, or delight. And that's the quality of tamim. And in contrast, he says, people who frequently hear the sound of the shofar, have heard it many, many years in many previous years, well, they might be like listening for how long the person blowing the shofar is blowing it or how strong they're blowing. But did they get all the notes right? They're objectifying the action and they are maybe even bringing us a cynical eye or ear, I guess, in this case, to the Torah. There's a kind of cynicism or judgment being used, certain jadedness that a person would bring. That's the opposite of tamim. Being tamim is sort of like curbing that cynical voice inside yourself that's always breaking things down and analyzing them and, and eyeing things with suspicion. So I think these are two really interesting ideas in this week's Torah portion that might even you know, seem to be in contrast with each other. Um, especially this week, as we've just witnessed, you know, this past few days, the Democratic convention and the Republican convention is, is coming up soon. Um, and we're gearing up for really important choices about our leaders in, in more than, you know, just uh, the presidential election, but also in Congress and all sorts of other things. And there's a tremendous amount of cynicism in the air. And for good reason, we've seen corruption and ineptitude and selfishness and it's been awful, and it also has had very serious consequences. But now we're coming to a new moment. And when we hold these two verses of the Torah together, the Torah is giving us important advice about the spirituality of choosing leaders. It says, on the one hand, yes, be cautious about appointing leaders and rulers because human nature can lead people to do some very bad and very destructive things. And yet, on the other hand, it's saying this, don't be so jaded and cynical that you can't approach the moment fully with your whole heart and appreciate the seriousness and, and the goodness of what we can possibly achieve. There are so many people who, who hear the cynicism in our American political system, and rather than engaging with it with a whole heart, they turn away and they will stay away from the political process altogether. And that's what cynicism does. It disempowers people from taking the steps that they can and should take to make our world a better place and to fully realize ourselves as human beings. So ultimately, that's, I think, why the Torah tells us, tamim in Adonai Elohecha. You shall be tamim. You shall be wholehearted with Adonai, your God. Because when we adopt a wholehearted attitude, when we set aside that jaded, constantly judging, dismantling, cynical voice, 
then we can be closer to being ourselves, our full selves, the full selves that God created us to be. And we can be closer then to having an effect in making the world its full and whole self as well. Shabbat Shalom. All right. Now we're going to move to the words of the Alenu, where we recall our obligations, right? We have obligations according to Jewish tradition. And so I invite you, if you wish, to rise in your place and to join me in the words of the Alenu. Alenu le Shabbat Ladon Hako, La Tet Kedula Liotzer Breshit. Shehuna Teshamaim Vayo said Aret, Omoshav Yakaro, Bashamaim, Mimaal, Ushinatuzo, Begov Hemiromim, Hu Hello Hainu, Ehein Od, Vaanachnu Koim, Omeshtahavim, Umodim, Lifne Melech, Malche Hamlachim, Hakadosh. Baruch Hu Al kene kave lecha Adonai Eloheinu Lirot mehera betiferet uzecha Litaken olam Bemalchut shaday Vene'emar Vehaya Adonai Lemelech al kol haaretz Bayom hahu Bayom hahu Ye Adonai echad O Shema, O Shema, O Shema, Echad. I want to, um, returning to the words of the Mourner's Kaddish, so I want to recite the names of those individuals for whom we'll be reciting Kaddish tonight, and we remember them. Um, first, those whose yard sites are observed, those who passed away this week in the calendar, in previous years, may their memories all be for a blessing. Judith Bear, Harry Shvat, Harry Cohen, Nathan Crosby, Alma Gamer, Jennifer Handrahan, Jeffrey Jampel, Phyllis Kirshen, Dina Gross Levengood, Bernard H. Lemline, Francis Garten Levine, Philip Malice, Gerald Michelson, Virginia Bingham Porter, Solomon Abraham Rosen, Sarah Sadowski, Lee Schott, Harvey Warren Skolnick, Sarah Shulinski, George Statman, Betty Storoff, Claire Sylvia, Kim Trimble, George Viner, Joseph Weinstein, and Ralph Wyant. And in the period of Shloshim, the past 30 days, uh, in this case, the past, uh, the past week, we're remembering these individuals in our own community uh, first, we remember our longtime member, Roberta Meyerhoff, who was laid to rest just this week. And we offer our condolences to her whole family, especially to her sons, Adam, Josh, and John. We, we offer them our, our heartfelt condolences on Roberta Meyerhoff's passing. I'm also very sorry to inform you of the death of Doris Gartman Barinholtz, mother of our member, Rochelle Seltzer. And uh, her mother passed away just this, just last night, actually. And uh, funeral arrangements are going to be announced shortly. We offer Rochelle our condolences, as well as Gabriel and Daniel, who were her grandchildren. And she was the great grandmother of Sammy and Arya Seltzer. So we offer all of them our condolences. And just a few minutes before Shabbat services began, I was also uh, uh, informed of the very, very sad and tragic death of Stephen Narva, son of our member, Sira Narva, um, who passed away after uh, an accident falling down the stairs. And we ask uh, God's blessing for all of them that they all find healing and we, um, we, we offer them our heartfelt condolences. So please name others for whom you'll be reciting Kaddish. You can do that out loud or you can do that in the chat. And I invite you to stand and to recite with me the words of the mourners Kaddish together. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shemei rabah ve'alma divra chirutei v'yamlich nachutei v'chayechon uv'yom echon uv'chayei d'chol beit Yisrael v'agala uv'izman kariv 
ואמרו אמן. יהי שמי רבה מברך לעולם ולעולמי עלמיה, יתברך וישתבח ויתפאר ויתרומם ויתנשא ויתהדר ויתעלה ויתהלל שמי דקודשא בריכו לאלה מן כל בירכתה ושירתה תושבחתה ונחמתה דמירן בעלמה ואמרו אמן. יהי שלמה רבה מן שמיא וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן, עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ועל כל יושבי תבל, ואמרו אמן. May all of their memories be for a blessing. אמן. All right, Shabbat Shalom to everybody. Um, thank you again for joining us. My, um, my YouTube live is saying we've got like 45 different uh, computers that are, that are watching us together. That means that we're probably 60 or 70 people. And it's really, really lovely to have everybody here together. And thank you for greeting each other in the, in the chat window. Um, I want to share with you a few announcements. Um, let's see. First of all, there is a racial justice Yom Iyun, a day of study. This coming Sunday, you probably received an e email about it earlier today. Um, we're all, everyone is welcome for the entire Jewish community across the country to engage. There are over a thousand people that are registered, I heard. And um, our assistant Rabbi Talia Stein will be teaching at 12 noon on Sunday. So please join the racial justice Yom Iyun this coming Sunday. Our, um, as we're thick in the month of Elul, our Borrow a Machzor program begins this coming Monday. If you would like to borrow a copy of the High Holy Day prayer book in both volumes, our Music Prayer Ritual Committee and our office staff are very, very happy to create this program so that anybody who'd like to have a copy of the Reform Movement High Holy Day prayer book can pick one up at Temple Sinai. Please call the office or send an email to the office uh, at office at sinaibrookline.org in advance so that Paul Kelly will set one aside for you. You actually, I want to be clear, you actually don't need a High Holy Day prayer book during the services of the High Holy Days themselves because like tonight, we're going to screen share uh, the virtual prayer book. But if you'd like to look it over, it's a wonderful, wonderful machzor and um, you can pick one up and look through it in the in the days leading up to the High Holy Days and have it available for your own personal prayer. Our, also on Monday, our High Holy Day food drive for the Grow Clinic at Boston Medical Center is beginning. For 28 years, Temple Sinai has been gathering lots and lots of food items, and we really want to encourage everybody to drop off food items. Call us to let you know when you'll be dropping off food for a safe, no-contact drop-off in the Temple Lobby. Uh, the, the entire month of Elul, you can do this. It starts Monday. You can go to the Temple website to see a, a whole list of all of the items that, that we're collecting. Um, Temple Sinai is encouraging people to complete the United States census forms. Make sure that you do this. And on Thursday, August 27th at five o'clock, we're going to have a joint effort to, um, to uh, make sure to, to have a drive for census registration. So make sure that you join us this coming Thursday. Um, we also had a wonderful outdoor shofar blast, as I mentioned earlier in the service for Elul. Uh, just yet last night. And we have another one this coming Tuesday, September 1st at seven o'clock. And the location for that is the Brown Street Playground, which is also called Winthrop Square. I don't know why it's called Winthrop Square and the Brown Street Playground, but hey, you know, some, some things have two names, uh, just like Jethro and, uh, you know, uh, Hobab or whatever it is. Um, so uh, you, you, pre-registration is required. You can look in your email and also on the Temple website for the registration forms. Um, we want to encourage, if you already participated, we're going to ask you not to participate, but um, uh, we've got space for about 30 people to participate in this one this coming Tuesday. I'm sorry, it's not this Tuesday, but it's a week from Tuesday. The date is September 1st, and then we have a couple more in September. We also want to encourage you during the month of Elul to subscribe to Temple Sinai's podcast, which is called Prepare Your Heart for the Jewish High Holy Days. So you can go to the Temple website or you can look it up on Apple Podcasts. We've got a whole bunch of short episodes that help you, I think, prepare yourselves for, yourself for the Jewish High Holy Days. So make sure that you do that. We've just like a few more announcements. Stick with me here. Um, we also have a Temple Sinai Community Art Project 
um, a collaborative zine where we're asking people to um, think about Rosh Hashanah as the birthday of the world and collect and contribute uh, a page for our art uh, for our art uh, our art project. So you can uh, do that, and we we have a great art leader for this, Basha Goldstein Weiss, who's a teacher at the Lincoln School in Brookline. So we want to encourage everybody to uh, participate in that. If you haven't yet registered for religious school or for Sinai U, if you have children in those grades, then we want to encourage you to do that. And the last thing I'll say is that we want to encourage everyone to continue joining us for Shabbat services at six o'clock next week, led by Temple Sinai volunteers. And then into September, the first couple of weeks of September, we will also be having Shabbat services just as we are tonight at six o'clock broadcast on this same bat channel same bat time. Susan Har asks, is that also the Rose Garden Park? Yes, Susan, you are exactly right. The Shofar Blast will be conducted on September 1st uh, in the Rose Garden at the Brown Street Playground. Good. All right. Whew, a lot of announcements. It's getting to be a busy time of year. So we want to encourage everybody to find your different ways of, of being involved. Also, spread the word about Temple Sinai. We want to encourage everybody who might not have you know, a synagogue that they know to, to come with us. So if you know somebody who's looking for a place for the holidays, doesn't matter where they are in the country, lead them towards the Temple Sinai website. All right, we're going to conclude with blessings now. First with Kiddush. So get out your Kiddush cup or whatever you may have. I've got mine right here. And please join me in the Kiddush blessings over first over wine. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Peri HaGahafen. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvot HaVeratza V'Hanu, V'Shabbat Kodsho B'Ava Uvratzon Hinchilanu, Zikaron L'Mahasei V'Reishit, Ki Hu Yom Tehila, Le mikra e kodesh, ze heleziat mitzraim. Ki vanu vacharta, viltanu ki dashta, mikol habim. Ve shabbat kod shecha, be ahava uvratzon, hin chaltanu. Baruch ata Adonai, Mekadesh, Hashabbat, Amen. L'chaim, l'chaim. All right, and before we conclude with the Mutzi, um, I just want to ask God's blessing for everybody in our community for health and safety on this particular Shabbat. Um, we're grateful that uh, Massachusetts is at a low place in terms of uh, the numbers of people who are infected, and that's good. We want, we're praying to God that it will stay that way. And um, I want to ask God's blessing for everybody in our community for health and goodness and blessing on this Shabbat. So uh, I invite you, if you want, to, to raise your hands also to uh, receive this blessing, but also to, to give the blessing to all of well, everybody who's on this uh, at, the, at this service tonight. Yivarech echa Adonai Vishmerecha May God bless you and protect you. Yair Adonai panahave lecha Vichunecha May God shine light upon you and be good to you. Yisa Adonai panahave lecha Vayasem lecha Shalom. Shalom. May God smile upon you as we enter Shabbat, as we enter the month of Elul, and bless you and all the people you care about with shalom, peace, and wholeness, with a whole heart, with tmimut, bitamim, with Adonai your God. And together we say, Amen. All right, if you want to join me in the motzi over challah, and then we'll wish everyone Shabbat Shalom. 
Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Hamotzi Lechem, Min HaHaaret. Amen. Shabbat Shalom to everyone. May you have a very, very good week. Up your heart in me, great spirit, create a pure heart in me, create a pure heart in me, great spirit, create a pure heart in me, and renew a true soul within me, and renew a true soul within and renew a true soul within me, and renew a true soul within me. Let a hope rally Elohim, rally let a hope. Let a hope rally Elohim. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.